if you remember the film that we had with Asaf Imbari, he talks about the fact that that there's now a whole generation of artists in Israel who are beginning to kind of fix the Ben-Gurion mistake and are beginning to use a broader language, a language which draws on, like he said, a, a, a larger and deeper sound box that resounds further. Uh, one of the artists that he was referring to is Alma Zohar, a singer-songwriter from Israel, uh, if you'd like to welcome. Hello. in the dark until the angels hear us and turn the lights back on, please. <laughs> a love affair which is only possible in a faraway land. Yes. 
Is, is, is that because this is the only place you can be? Is, is, is life outside of Israel kind of not real? Not real? It's maybe more real than life inside Israel. Actually, um, I think this song probably raises the most urgent question on the, in the Jewish world today, which is what do good Israeli girls do in that after army trip to the Far East or to South America? Um, and what they basically do is they look to fall in love. They also do drugs, but most of that, they look to fall in love um, with that uh, <laughs> native man, whoever he is. And after this song was released, actually my, my uh, email inbox was flooded with uh, emails uh, saying, oh, this song is so much about me and Pedro or whoever. Um, <laughs> So this is going on, and I think the song was successful because it really looks at a very widespread uh, phenomenon. But then, uh, what you've got, what, the, the, the woman in this song, who may well be similar Probably to you, me. could well be you. <laughs> Probably me, in Ethiopia. My parents are not in the audience, are they? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, um, this, she comes back, why, why did she come back to Israel? Because it, it, here in this, she talks about you and me as in her relationship with this guy, but is it also talking about her relationship with Israel, that it's a kind of a rut, it's kind of something that you're stuck with? Well, she probably came back because she ran out of money. <laughs> and uh, her parents were really pressuring her to go into the university. Um, she's still at that age where girls don't realize that what's really sexy about a guy is financial security. <laughs> um, but she will eventually come to that conclusion because to rent an apartment in Tel Aviv today really not the kind of thing that your Native American average guy can really afford. Um, so she will come of age, basically. I mean, she lasts uh, in the Far East or in South America and Africa as long as she can afford to, and then she'll, she'll call up Daddy, say, oh, I've been exploring the world, I really want to stay, and Daddy's going to say, no, you must come back here. Your mum and I want to introduce you to some nice guy in some high tech. <laughs> and that's really, you know, that's really the average Israeli story. Uh, she, for a while she felt part, I think, I think for a while she felt part of the great big world and she didn't have to be so Israeli and feel like such an outcast. She was all, she was all about free love and, and something you don't really, really experience here in Israel, free love and whatever. No, no borders, no limits. I think, I think Israeli young people are really starved for that sort of, of dancing on the beach experience. Which is similar to what the guys in Balkan Beatbox were talking about in the, in the, in the film that we saw earlier. Um, but what, I, I guess what, one of the things which, so it, what seems to be, or certainly what we've been talking about, is that when she's abroad, ah. Oh my God, so there is a God. That's great because in about, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <now. laughs> there she is. <laughs> yeah, because in about three minutes we're going to turn the lights off again, so that's, that's going to really go well. Um, the, it turns out that what's happening, what seems to be happening more and more often is that um, she's abroad, um, and when mum and dad want her to meet the Israeli guy from high tech, or the guy from high tech, he's probably living there, not here. And so then they'll they'll stay I longer. Prefer if she could meet a nice Israeli guy who lives in America, uh, that's a better place to live. There's no war. I mean, financial situation is probably better, or maybe not as it used to be. But if she can meet a nice guy in Canada or Australia, she's better off. I don't think I don't think Israeli parents are really all against that. They're going to miss her, but they're also going to guarantee a much better future for their grandchildren if she goes abroad. Oh, come on. And, and, and yet yourself, you, you came back and you stayed. And in fact, you, more and more, you're working in Hebrew. But we're really, we're dying out minority. Actually, I do have a, my father immigrated to London, which is why I have this weird accent. I think it's marvelous. <laughs> I, know, I thought you would. Um, so actually, part of my family is now British, officially British. 
Um, for me, that was a terrible experience as a child. Uh, I did survive a few years of that Jewish free school in London. Um, my shrink says, with the medications they have today, I should be able to get over it. Um, and I came back a Zionist, but I'm really, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a minority. I think the majority of people my age in Israel really, really do look to immigrate uh, if they just have the possibility, and they don't. But the few who do, my bass player, married a nice Israeli-Canadian girl and he's moving to Canada and I'm on the lookout for a good bass player if you know anyone. So this uh, has been going on, will probably still be going on unless there's a really unexpected outcome <laughs> to the next elections. Okay. <laughs> Hint. I, yes. Most, yeah, we'll, okay. we'll not go there. No, uh, no let's not. Let's um, and when they are abroad, what we've been talking about is where there is sometimes a disconnect between the language of mainstream Israeli culture and the language of the Jewish culture that they come into contact with or, or seek to avoid contact with when, when they're abroad. Um, and, and I know that in, in your work, a great deal of your work seems to go further than Tanakh, further than using biblical language, but actually a bit of um, rabbinic language and liturgical language as well. Um, so we're going to listen to uh, one of your songs, then we'll, we'll talk a bit more about that one. Okay? Oh, um, we, we're going to go for Mimitzrayim. Um, uh, uh, Do you want to say a few words about it beforehand, or should we listen to the song first? Let's warn them. <laughs> I'm a human rights activist. I look like a nice girl, but I'm actually a human rights activist. And I'm very active uh, with the local African asylum seeker. Uh, community. Um, let's hear that song. I think it speaks for itself. Yeah. <laughs> Ri 
ריבונו של עולם, שלא נזדקק אף פעם לרחמים של בני אדם, כי בכל דור ודור חייב אדם לראות עצמו כאילו הוא יצא ממצרים, שלא ישכח איך ברח חוקה ושפל נרצח. איך זעק לשמיים, אהההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההה
Um, it's really a very liberal country when it comes to... Uh, the, the way that the radio works is in particular the, the, the largest, the, the most listened to radio station, Gal Galatz, it works according to a playlist. It's not according to... It belongs what to the IDF, because in most countries, the most popular radio station belongs to the army and is actually controlled by the army. Isn't it so in the States? No! Surprising. Well, it is so in Israel. Um, and actually... So a, pl a playlist, a playlist is, actually, is actually decided upon by the IDF. Uh, so this song was not played on the radio ever. But it's got, you know, it's made its way in the world. Um, With a gorgeous video. Who did the animations? Someone who volunteered. <laughs> a young guy, a student, did this animation. It's actually beautiful. It's gorgeous. So going from Perouche, from interpretation, of, of text. I think this, this next song is probably very much um, uh, shimush, a use of text, very much taking it into a different, uh, different context.
So here's one of those fascinating ideas, isn't it? That um, the ethics of the fathers, that as the sages were coming up with and, and uh, codifying these sayings, that they were expecting it to be playing on mainstream ra radio in the in the 21st <laughs> century. Th this one made it to Gal Galatz? Yes, yes. The, this one made it there, and, and, and so tell us a little bit about, th this doesn't seem to be serving the original purposes of ethics of the fathers of Pilkei Avot, this would be more of your yanking it <laughs> in your direction. Probably, but yes and no, um, because it really says, uh, it, it really talks about an idea that I, I, I believe in, that, that the more you're aware uh, of who it is you're serving, and the more you are aware of who you really are, that the deeper you're rooted in your own culture, and, and the more confident you are about who you are and what you've come to this world uh, to do, uh, you'll probably be more uh, forgiving uh, or more ex accepting uh, towards other people who have other ways of life. Um, you'll probably be less threatened and less aggressive and less on the run. Um, and I really, really believe in this idea of being a new Jew. And this new Jew is not a, a, a little rat on the run. It's, it's a very um, uh, self-confident person, uh, deeply, deeply rooted in, in, in their culture and history, and very much willing to give um, uh, to other uh, people and offer whatever uh, wisdom, uh, talent, and goodwill uh, us Jewish people have. Uh, so I think this song is really about that. It's, it's, it's about who you are and how you feel about yourself and how you manifest yourself in the world. Um, so maybe it's not such a different idea from the original idea, which says, you know, beware of who you are in the greater picture. Don't, don't just look at your everyday life and struggles, but... So, so this new Jew is, is slightly different from the, from the Sabra? Yes. It, it's not quite the Ben-Gurion new Jew. Would you well, say? I think it's very natural that when you have something very extreme uh, going on like that, 2,000 years of exile and the Holocaust, and then you have Zionism, which takes very much the opposite side of saying, let's not never be victimized again. On either side, you, you just, you, you're seeing yourself as a victim either way, as a victim and then as a post-victim. But then you should mature into something else, which is a not-victim person. Um, and not be defined just by trauma, uh, but by other things, uh, such as a tradition and thought and, and uh, whatever else it means to be Jewish, or to you, maybe, maybe you have other aspects of this uh, idea than me, but... So in a sense, this isn't just talking to some guy who annoyed you, this is... Uh, it's also extent. talking about some guy who annoyed me, really. <laughs> really. Okay. Um, before we, um, we probably have time to hear one more song. Were there any questions or, or comments that anybody wanted to ask or, or throw out? Uh, yeah, or, 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 uh, or read. yes. Um, uh, I'll, re I'll repeat. Okay. Most of your friends or most of the people, people your age, uh, would want to immigrate from Israel if they could. Um, I want to know what they're running from, for, in your opinion. If they're running from their Jewishness or they're not they, enough they familiar the with their Jewishness to want to run from it. I think what they don't really see is future in this country as liberal and modern people. Um, because they might love this place, it's where they grew up, they have, they have sentiments towards Israel, but they don't really see a financial future, and they don't really see a future that will allow them to live a liberal, modern life, because Israel is going to extremes, okay? Um, and there is really less and less, uh, um, Oh my God. They didn't like what you said there. Oh I'm sorry, <laughs> but I shall repent. <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't even really know how to say it in just a few words, but it's depressing, and I think people are depressed. And I was one of those people who last summer lived out on the street in tents, and were really, really hoping uh, to change the future of this country, and still are hoping to change the future of this country. Um, but it really didn't work out all that well. 
and Not I yet. think people are you no, know, people are really depressed. They didn't go out this summer to, to struggle again because they just felt oh, and people just say it's never going to change. I have an aunt in Australia. I'm going to call her up see if she can have me for a while. I I can't agree at all. <laughs> you, at you all. Not. Sorry, I can't agree because I I'm so lucky to meet. Many, many, many Israelis. I, I'm, um, I'm helping them, but they, they're standing up. They are volunteering in any idea. They, they are going volunteering one year before the army. They have a movement. If it's Shamer Hadash, if it's Acharai, if it's oh, I can tell you and tell you and tell you. I meet those new Zionist Israelis. They stand up and say we want to change, and there are many, many. There are thousands of them, and we say. And they, they are four, and they give up, and they say we. And also they go to the to education. They volunteer. And they know that they need to give up uh, the life of a lot of money, and they they want to be new halutzim. And I see I'm privileged to meet those people who are the the backbone of Israel. You don't know about them because we don't. We don't, uh, uh, you know, the, the newspapers, radio, television are not for so positive things. But I, I can <clears throat> tell you and be witness to thousands of Israelis that they, they are, say we are here. And I'm so proud to be part of them. Thank you very much. So am I. And there really are a lot of wonderful people doing a lot of wonderful things, but in the general picture, since I was a girl and it was bon ton to go to the youth movement, everybody went to either one or the other and to volunteer, just like it was no question you'd go into the army. I went into the army and you know, would you trust me to hold a weapon? But I still went and my, my parents uh, made it clear to me that it wasn't a question because you have to go. Um, so from, from one year to the next, you'd see less and less Israelis really going. Uh, we went from being the country of kibbutz and all for, you know, one for all and all that, uh, to really radical uh, capitalism. Why did not start radical capitalism? Okay. Just a, uh, a rabbinic comment that your interpretation, given the new creative style, is smack in the middle of what Akavya ben Mahalalel meant. Sure. No two ways about it. Sure, sure, I agree. That's lovely, that's lovely. Um, I think we're gonna, we're gonna listen to one more song and then we're going to wrap up. Um, <laughs> לראות אולי את הדברים כמו שהם נראים משם צפה לבדי בנהרות אדם שכרתי לי דירה בין סדום לעמורה מתפרנסת בדוחה מעבודה זרה Shalom 
together one of those interesting things that maybe if we're talking about the nature of Israeli culture Jewish culture when it's displaced from Israel I guess I'm left with the question does it lose its political baggage because certainly what we've got from this conversation is that there's a whole there's a political um, there are political weights and shackles which are attached to our interpretation of songs which may well be different when the songs move elsewhere Probably. I don't have an overseas career, so that comes to show. <laughs> Funny enough, this song talks about exile in Tel Aviv, and it really uh, asks the question uh, whether exile is only a physical uh, question of where you are located in the world, or whether exile is, is an inner state. Um, Babylon and Tel Aviv, uh, which are sort of uh, played between in the song, um, it talks about me moving from Jerusalem, where I was born, to Tel Aviv, and feeling rather in exile, in exile from my true self. Um, so that is a question. I don't know if Israelis who've moved overseas are so, must be in exile from the from the Jewish identity, from their Israeli identity. It's not necessarily so. But we have to ask ourselves why it turns out that way, that they move away and then they cut themselves from this culture. Um, and it's really a deeper question than just saying, oh, now that they're, they're just, they just want to be absorbed in the, in the local culture where they, where, where they live. I think it's deeper than that. I think if you wanting to belong to something, you have to really believe in it, and you have to believe it has a future. And when you don't no longer want to belong to something, it's because you think it's a dying thing, and you don't want to be part of it anymore. Moving back to Asaf Mbari's image of the river moving from past to present to future, rather than the old puddle. Ladies and gentlemen, Almazar. Thank Thanks. 